While every Resident Evil within the past half decade has been nothing short of a disappointment, Resident Evil 7 adds one of the biggest twists to its gameplay while still showing while it deserves a spot in the franchise. What's going on guys, Snickle here and in today's video I'll be walking you through the most efficient way to get the Platinum Trophy in Resident Evil 7 for the PlayStation 4. There are a few ways that you can go about getting the Platinum, but this method will be one of the more efficient ways. There are some trophies that are missable as you can't access certain areas in the game once you leave. There should be no spoilers throughout this guide as everything that will be discussed does not go over anything specifically related to the storyline. This guide is meant for people that have never played the game before. It's something that they can watch to help them map out how they should go about getting this Platinum. As for a breakdown of the trophy list, it consists of 22 bronze, 12 silver, 3 gold, and 1 platinum, with a total of 38 trophies. You are required to play through the game a minimum of 2 times, and this is due to you needing to complete the game's 2 different endings. But this guide, I'll go over a method of getting the platinum in 3 playthroughs to account for the speedrun that must be done. Since your choice for each ending comes about halfway through the game, there's no reason of doing the method of uploading your save to the cloud and then re-downloading it. There are three trophies related to the different difficulties and eight trophies related to the various collectibles in the game. All the other trophies require you to do something random throughout the game, complete some sort of challenge, and of course, natural progression trophies. There are no multiplayer trophies that you'll need to obtain to get this platinum, as the game does not have a multiplayer functionality. Below will be links to all types of guides that will help you get trophies throughout the game, and any links that I think will be useful as well. Also, there will be a full list of the order that I personally earned my trophies. You can go about getting this platinum many different ways, but this guide I'll go through one of the more efficient ways to get it. Again, for this method you'll need to play through the game a minimum of 3 times, one of them being a 2-3 to three hour speedrun. I'll go over how you should go about getting through each one of your playthroughs. There are a good amount of random trophies that you'll only have limited opportunities to get throughout the game. I won't talk about each one of these in depth, but mention when you should be getting these. There will be a playlist linked in the description again that will have all types of trophy and collectible guides for anything that you may be having issues with. In the upper right hand corner you'll see the trophy tracker. When that reaches 38 out of 38 you should have collected every trophy in the game and successfully earned your platinum trophy. With all that being said, let's get into this guide. Before we start talking about how you should be going about any of your playthroughs, let's talk about some natural progression trophies. There's a total of 8 of them that are specifically related to the story. 6 of them are related to getting to certain stages in the game and you'll get them on your first playthrough, while the other 2 are related to the 2 different endings that you can get. Picking ending 1 or 2 is pretty obvious and happens about halfway through the game. Just be mindful of your choice in your previous playthroughs when you're going through on your second or your third run. Beating the game on the various difficulties is not accounted for in this section, but those trophies will be covered when getting how you should be going through each one of your other playthroughs. And also, let's talk about the various collectibles that you'll have to be going for throughout this game. There are 8 trophies that are related to these collectibles. This accounts for the antique coins on the easy and normal difficulties, and it also accounts for the antique coins on the madhouse difficulty. It also includes the Mr. Everywhere statues, files, and trophies related to the multiple videotapes throughout the game. There is a playlist in the description that includes a full collectible guide for both the easy and normal collectibles and the antique coins on Madhouse. I'll go over how you should be using these videos a little later on in this guide. Before we get in how to go through each playthrough, let's talk about the last thing, which are the various other trophies that you should be paying attention to throughout the game. Some of these trophies can be earned only at specific times, while others can be earned any time throughout the game. Make sure to keep an eye out for some of these time-specific trophies. If you don't get it in your first playthrough, then try your best to get it in your second or even third. These trophies consist of simple things like the trophy behind closed doors. This trophy just wants you to close an open door by yourself, but I did include some of the challenges based trophies in this section, like Duck If You Love Life, which is to avoid Jack's scissor attack by crouching, you'll more than likely get a majority, if not all of these, within your first playthrough, but don't worry, you'll have two more playthroughs to attempt any of these various trophies that you do miss. There is a playlist in the description that has all types of guides for these trophies if you're having troubles and you don't know where you want to get them. The three Extreme Challenge Gold trophies at the bottom of the trophy list were not included in this section though, and I will talk about them a little later on. Now let's get into actually playing the game and how you should go about each of your playthroughs. I wanted to minimize the amount of playthroughs needed for this Platinum while still letting you be able to have all the immersion and scare factor in your first playthrough. 
Unfortunately, there was no way to get the best of both worlds. You'll need to use a collectible guide on your first playthrough if you want to get the platinum done in three total playthroughs. In the description is a collectible guide that I made for the game in my Resident Evil 7 playlist at the very bottom of it. I tried to make this guide have the least amount of story spoilers while still clearly showing where everything is located. Now that all that's out of the way, you should either be doing this playthrough on normal or easy. I personally suggest to do it on normal since it's pretty manageable, but the choice is up to you. I'll count in the trophy tracker that it was completed on normal even though the difficulty trophies do stack. This means if you do it on easy now and then you go to play Madhouse, that you'll get the Madhouse and normal difficulty trophies. The goal of this playthrough is to enjoy the game but also get all the collectibles done and as many as the various trophies as possible. Also you should be going for one of the extreme challenge trophies here as it's pretty easy to do on either normal or easy difficulty. You should be going for the trophy walk it off which is to complete the game using only three first aids or less. So to break down this playthrough a little more simple you'll need to be beating the game on normal or easy while getting all the collectibles and beating the game while using less than three first aids. You should be able to get through this playthrough in around 10 hours. This totals up to three more additional trophies that you should earn at the end of this playthrough. Now we get into the hardest part of this platinum, which is the second playthrough. Since you've now completed your first playthrough, you've unlocked the Madhouse difficulty. Not only does this make the enemies harder to kill and give you less health, the game throws a complete curveball by changing the enemy spawn locations and the overall feel of the game. On this playthrough, you'll need to find all the newly placed antique coins unless you feel like playing through the Madhouse difficulty for a second time for some sick reason. Since you beat the game earlier, you're given the Albert 01R in your inventory box. This gun uses normal handgun ammo, so use this instead of the basic pistols. The only other piece of advice that I can give for this playthrough is to find and take the M21 shotgun from the main hall and fix it as soon as possible. Even on Madhouse, this shotgun can do a one-hit kill on mostly any enemy and is a must-have if you want to get through as stress-free as possible. Also, when you get halfway through the game on this playthrough, don't forget to pick whichever ending you didn't pick on your previous playthrough. The second playthrough should take you around 10 more hours to complete. By this point in the game, you should have everything collected, all various trophies done, and all the difficult stuff out of the way, and now we can get into the fun part of this Platinum. Now that you've completed the Madhouse difficulty, you have access to unlimited ammo. For this playthrough, you'll need to go for the speedrun trophy, just get me out of here, on the easiest difficulty, of course. Even though this trophy is for beating the game in 4 hours, with 2 prior playthroughs under your belt, you should know the game inside and out and be able to complete it in around 2-3 to three hours. These prior playthroughs will give you easy insights for locations of items and the best ways to get through areas. I again suggest that you take the M21 shotgun from the main hall and fix it, it can prove extremely helpful in the boss fights. Also, since this is a speedrun, be sure to pass everything that you can only fight the enemies when you need to fight them. The only other difficult thing about this playthrough is that you need to also go for the trophy Resource Manager. This is to complete the game without opening the item box more than three times. The item box is the greenish box that's in the safe areas that you can store things in. You're forced to use the box three times for the story, once before entering the birthday party, once before exiting the birthday party, and the last time is after you escape from the ship at the very end of the game. Be sure to remember to grab the lever after the birthday party or you'll have to restart from an earlier checkpoint so that you don't accidentally use the box twice there. You may feel restricted doing this, but a lot of the items will be useless since you'll be doing the speed run on the easiest difficulty. You should also know the locations of all the guns and backpack upgrades, so this shouldn't be a problem at all. After completing all the steps above, you should earn this Platinum Trophy, Bio Splattered. Even though you need to play through the game a total of three times, you'll love this game through every playthrough you do. This being the biggest twist to the Resident Evil franchise since Resident Evil 4, it was an amazing experience that I didn't want to end. Even with the amount of random trophies, you're given ample time and playthroughs to acquire anything that you'll miss. Though this game took me nearly 3 weeks to Platinum, if you played a few hours a day it shouldn't take you any more than 30 hours to achieve the Platinum. I hope you did enjoy the video, if you have any questions or comments be sure to leave them below. If you did find this video helpful be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Anyway, I hope to see you guys around sometime soon.